All right, guys. PB, why it failed? This just kept, you know, popping up on my recommended. I figured I would react to it, guys. What the heck is Kiwi? Let's check it out. This video is. I think I seen this on the app store. But I was like, yo, I don't think I need this, bro. Like, what's it even for? I don't have many apps. Guys, I only have like social media, food, food, food delivery apps. What's the point of apps? Sponsored by Trends. Right now, you can get your first two weeks for just one dollar. Simply you know what trends. Mean. Oh, what's a what's a what's a trends, bro? Slash company <laughs> man for your one dollar two. Looks like a magazine. Two week trial. A betting man, guys. This, this is what the channel's called. He's a dude. He's a faceless YouTuber. And it talks about companies. And uh, you know, failing, even occasionally failing companies like Kiwi. Quibi. Now this is an interesting case. I've actually Quibi, sorry. Quibi. I've really seen plenty of people criticizing that name, but I think it's great. It's snappy, memorable, has a cool sound to it. It's just fun to say. In fact, it seems the whole topic has become the cool new thing to make fun of. A lot of it is justified, though there is a lot to respect as well. But yeah, it's a pretty big failure. I believe the quickest one that I've ever talked about on this channel. Right, judging by the visuals here, it looks like a like a streaming service or something like a watch show kind of service. Thing. It's looking like the entirety of the service will have lasted for seven months, from April to December of 2020. In short, Quibi was a bold attempt to establish a brand new Netflix-like streaming service with a pretty big twist to. Oh uh, snap! So Netflix probably sh shut them out, guys. Tough to go against Netflix, right guys? The word Quibi stands for Quick Bites because all of their content was less than 10 minutes long. It was meant to be- Uh... Good on that, right guys? 10 minutes? What is it, YouTube, bro? Even on YouTube, sometimes, you know, 10 minutes, bro. Watched ex 10 minutes for shows, no, like... <laughs> I mean, like, whenever I grab food, uh... Uh, you know, and I, you know, you grab food, you look for something to cool to watch. But I eat the food in like three minutes, guys. It kind of sucks. Anyone, anyone else do that? Let me know in the comments. Exclusively on your phone while you have some downtime during your day. If you're waiting for your next class to start, commuting on a train, standing in line somewhere, or maybe you're in the dentist office. Sorry, but like eight minute production, like eight minute, like, uh, you know, long short films are not the... I mean, uh, I said eight minute, like ten, less than ten minute uh, short films do not seem advertising to me, guys. I'm not going to lie. But, you know, hey, it, it's a kind of a good idea for somebody that likes, would like this kind of stuff. You know what I mean? It's like an untapped market. Office in the waiting room. You know, those five to ten minute periods where you're looking around on Instagram or Reddit or whatever. Their hope was that you would instead fire up the Quibi app and watch one of their many ten minute shows or movies. The ad supported plan cost $4.99, $7.99 without the ad, so I want to talk about... $4.99s and you still get ads? No oh, man. Shut it down. I'm sorry guys. If I'm paying $4.99 a month, I, I want no ads. Some of the reasons Quibi did seem promising, and then attempt to figure out what went wrong. First off, the leadership. The main people in charge over at Quibi were their CEO, Meg Whitman, and their founder and chairman of the board, Jeffrey Katzenberg. Two people with incredibly impressive resumes. Here, for Meg Whitman, she has degrees from both Princeton and Harvard. Most Snap, bro. Okay, so one of these corporate executives that not many even know about. Famously, in 1998, she joined eBay as their president and CEO. I mean, hey, it feels like I should know about her, man. She took over there. That's how eBay looked. Terrible, bro. When nobody knew who they were, she led them through their IPO, and by the time she left, ten years later, they had become the multi-billion-dollar company that we all know. Dang, bro, she's already rich at this point. And that's not even the end of it either. From 2011 to 20... Yeah, guys, I'd rather watch like an 8-minute YouTube video than an 8-minute short show. It just feels like I couldn't get invested in it. Like an 8-minute short film, guys. In my opinion, I never go out and watch them. Sorry if I already said that before. In 2018, just... she was the president and CEO of... But hey, she, she had money to, you know, mess around with and she had an idea in it, you know? 
I'm not sure if the app's even around. We'll have to see. Lit Packard. Now, it has not been a flawless career, but if you were starting a new company and looking for someone to lead it, you could do a lot worse than Meg Whitman. In Quibi's case, the founder was Jeffrey Katzenberg, who was probably one of the biggest names in the entertainment industry. He has served in increasingly bigger roles at Paramount, Disney, and DreamWorks. He was a big part in reviving Disney's animation in the early 1990s. He's known for producing all of these classic films around that time including Aladdin, Beauty and the Beast, and The Lion King. Damn, bro. I liked all three of those movies. Lion King. From there, he was one of the founding members of DreamWorks alongside Steven Spielberg and David Geffen. If you ever watch that beginning thing with the boy fishing on the moon, you'll see that SKG. Well, the K in that is him. Among many others, For real, dog? He was behind Shrek. Oh, I like Shrek as well. Madagascar. Shrek. And <laughs> Kung Fu Panda. Oh, I liked all those, man. 2016, Dream. All, 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 all DreamWorks or Pixar films are a W in my book. DreamWorks animation was sold to Comcast in a deal where he personally received an estimated $400 million. Okay, this guy's freaking a baller, bro. He also has money you could just mess around with, guys. You have to admit that this appears to be a pretty solid pair. You have Meg Whitman managing the business end, and then Jeffrey Katzenberg on the creative end. That could lead to something big. Yeah, these two are freaking champions, bro. Leaders of the world. Which is... Or at least, you know, pretty close to actually it. Actually, what... <laughs> I mean, it's just one business in a batch of hundreds of... Jillions of businesses, but dang. Many of the investors were thinking. A second reason you may think that Quibi would be successful is the $1.75 billion that they were able to raise. Sure, it gave them the money to do stuff, like spend $63 million on advertising, including expensive commercials that were aired during the Super Bowl and the Oscars before the service was even available. But that funding... Dang, bro, if I see a, a, a commercial like that, I'm, it's going to be like, I'm going to be thinking like, yo, they're probably losing a good amount of money because it looks like a fairly new company. It also involved all of these big names in the industry. I mean, everybody was on board with this. They received money from Disney, Warner, Sony, Viacom, all of which obviously thought that there was potential for Quibi since they had the... Dang, bro, all... The they're all investing in Quibi, guys. Money with all of these names attached, they were able to attract some talent to make their shows. Some examples: Most Dangerous Game had Liam Hemsworth and Christoph Waltz. Chrissy's Court had Chrissy Teigen. Their new punk show had Chance the Rapper. They even had all of this stuff planned with big-time writers. But how are they gonna go against YouTube? You could just post it on YouTube and make money, like directors and producers. I'm just thinking back to how that six-second time constraint on Vine led to some crazy content that wouldn't otherwise exist. Well. Vine, by the way. Six seconds is... They, they, they did it wrong, bro. TikTok now has like 10 minute plus videos. Here, the constraints of Quibi led to some unique show formatting that otherwise wouldn't exist. Many of... TikTok used to be a maximum of 60 seconds, but they're making some cool changes, guys. Very cool changes. Like, you can make so much money off TikTok. These creators actually welcome that as a challenge. Another promising aspect was what they called their turnstile technology. It was pretty cool. It was this thing that allowed you to watch the shows on your phone, either horizontally or vertically. You could switch between the two and it would still cover the whole screen, and the shows were made with that in mind. And oh! Some of them did find some clever ways oh, to utilize cool. the feature for the show Wireless. I, I don't know if any of that does that currently. It stands out because when you turned your phone vertical, you would see what's going on on the character's phone. Like I said, creating the types of content that would probably otherwise not exist. Now, let me... Yo, that, that should be the future, man. That, that is actually pretty awesome. So, shout out Quibi for doing that. talk about why none of this... But yeah, so much extra programming to, to do some sort of stuff. It's, it's like the same thing with the Wii U, man. It would be hard for them to make it exclusive J just for Quibi, man. Like, you know what I mean? I mean, they should. I think, uh, you know, if they want to make a good show, they should be across. Them. They should always do it, but how are they going to make it across for different platforms? This turned out to be quite as good as it may have seemed. First off, looking at the talent, they did have some of the biggest, most respected names in the industry, but they weren't getting their best stuff. Let me just put it this way, if you had a script that you were trying to sell somewhere in Hollywood and you had an offer from Disney and an offer from Quibi, which one are you going to take? 
Quit be, I mean, uh, Disney all day, guys. You see what I'm getting at, and by using that logic, we can assume that a good deal of their content was passed on by the bigger studios. So just because they had bigger names doesn't mean they had the best stuff. Possibly proven by the fact that over that short time, they made dozens of shows, and I wouldn't call a single one of them a breakout hit. So all of that talent doesn't mean much if it doesn't... And they're like, we have all this money, let's go hire all these, uh, you know... Fairly well-known actors. Tyra Banks as well, well. Wow. ...lead to anything. For their turnstile technology, the obvious criticism with that one is who wants to watch TV shows in portrait mode? To me anyway, it's more of a novelty that you mess around with for a few minutes and then pretty much forget about it. I know, right, but it would be cool to have 24-7, you know what I mean? Just to switch in between the two while, while you're watching a show or something. There's also a lawsuit involving that that complicates things, but I want to jump to that $1.75 billion in funding because that will lead us to the biggest reason behind their failure. I say that because, believe it or not, $1.75 billion is not even close to being enough money. Here, I'll explain. I don't think I have to tell you that's... Not with inflation, not... In today's uh, economy, right, guys? And I'm over here making a thousand dollars every six, almost a year, guys. Streaming services have become outrageously popular. On the upside, it's a market with seemingly unlimited potential, but on the downside, everybody already knows that. Sure, you have what's become the classics like Netflix, Hulu, Amazon, but then you have all of these new ones from Apple and Disney and HBO. I know, right? Look at all them, man. My friend has a subscription to, like, all most of these, bro. Like Every single one of these is backed by a massive company that continues to invest huge amounts of money into the service. Yeah, I mean, she maybe she stayed with eBay and made, like, you know, 10 billion or something. 20 billion plus. Looking at Netflix, they're spending over 15 billion dollars a year on content. That includes the production of their own original content, in addition to money that they pay other studios to show their title. That man. So that's not even including the back catalog of stuff that they have produced over the past seven years. Talking about back catalogs, look at Disney. They have been building theirs for almost a hundred years, and they've been adding to it with multi-billion dollar acquisitions like Marvel and Pixar. The fact is that every major streaming service is spending billions of dollars every year on content, and most of them are adding that to an ex billions, guys. extensive library of content that they already own. So I think anybody would agree that Quibi over here, with their one 1.75 billion dollars in funding and no back catalog never even had a chance going up against all these others that would be like me challenging steph curry to a three-point shooting contest i could <laughs> guys totally unimaginable my fair share of threes but it would only lead to disappointment but you know what Quibi knew that, so instead of jumping right into something that they couldn't win, they kind of tried to walk around it. I think a great example of this would be Arby's. See, in the 1960s, fast food was exploding in popularity. It was the big new thing. You had McDonald's up at the top with their hamburgers and their franchising. Now it's more seen as like a luxury, unless you're uh, making a decent income, guys. I only get it once a month and a ton of other companies following their lead opening very similar restaurants. The Raffle Brothers, who started Arby's, realized how much competition there would be if they tried to sell hamburgers, so instead they chose to avoid it and sell something a little different, which of course was roast beef. Do you see what I'm saying? Quibi... Hey, uh, Arby's is a successful company now, though, guys. Tried to pull an Arby's, a sentence that I never thought I would say. But try to imagine if the Raffle Brothers didn't know exactly what they were doing when it came to making roast beef sandwiches. What I'm trying to say is the direction Quibi tried to veer was obviously toward the younger demographic, the fast-paced younger people who are more likely to watch stuff on their phone and use social media. Well, I have... Fortunately, eight minutes is quite a while, though, man. When TikTok, you know, you can just watch a TikTok for like 10, 5 seconds, even a few seconds, and just switch to the next one. Eight minutes is a while to sit down for, man. You know what I mean? What if you gotta do something in between? Good reason to believe that 64-year-old Meg Whitman and 69-year-old Jeffrey Katzenberg may have been a little out of touch when it came to their core demographic. I say that for all these little oversights like not allowing screenshots, which made it harder for people to talk about and promote Quibi on social media, but I have to ask, has anyone ever paused something on Netflix and then came back to watch it later? That's simple enough, right? If you only have 10 minutes, it doesn't have to be a 10-minute show. I'll bet you can go ahead and start a 25-minute show 
and just finish it later. For that reason, their biggest gimmick, the 10 minute shows, the thing that they are named after, didn't fully swerve away from any streaming service that, you know, has a pause button. But then, in that little swerve that they did make, they ran right into another group that was competing for people's remaining time on their phone. I'm talking about YouTube and Snapchat and mobile games, all of Snap, bro. Which are generally YouTube's number one. Really free. And I would bet that if Quibi were somehow able to work it out to where it was free, they would have a good chance. In fact, when they first introduced it, they offered this free 90 day free trial, and it did pretty well during. Free in quotations, man. Hey, it, it's better than a 30 day free trial, man. I had to sign up for a 30 day free trial for Amazon for like the 30th time, man. I can't afford no 15 bucks a month. That time, Quibi debuted with 1.7 <laughs> million downloads in their first week, making them one of the most downloaded apps in all of the app stores. Not bad, not bad. But when those trials ended, that's where things took a bad turn. I've seen some reports that less than 10% of people who did a free trial converted to paying. Basically showing that people were willing to spend time on it, just not for $5 a month. <laughs> Hey, that's a risk they had to take, though. These two leaders of the company that I've been talking about put out this open letter where they say Quibi is not succeeding, likely for one of two reasons, because the idea itself wasn't strong enough to justify a standalone streaming service or because of our timing. When they talk about timing, they're referring to the pandemic, which I would definitely say was another unfortunate aspect. They launched the service in the beginning of April, right when things were starting to close. Dang, bro and people were staying at home when the intended purpose of it was so people could watch things during their commutes and their downtime which were altered i mean they were so confident in this out and about model that they didn't even make it watchable on televisions they did start introducing ways for people to do it through airplay and chromecast but it's pretty clear that they were planning for people to watch quibi when they were not at home but oh man so you can't watch it on your tv i don't understand guys you could just like screencast your phone to your TV, can't you? Of course, on the other end of that argument, their launch in April still exceeded expectations. Meg Whitman even appeared on TV during- Oh. Her name sounds familiar now, I don't know why. ...during that time, saying that they were unaffected by any of that. But it didn't hurt us at all. So it's hard to judge. Their timing probably was- Doing a lot of interviews about it, guys. It wasn't beneficial, but it was not the core of their issues. My guess is that it probably just made everything happen a little faster. Let hey, not every business succeeds. Let me know in the comments, where did things go wrong for Quibi? Why do you think that's such a promise? We, we went... We went over it earlier. The start ended in such an embarrassing failure. Was it the reasons that I talked about, or were there more things beyond that? Also, I'm curious, do you have any personal experience with them? Were you part of the free trial? Were you one of the few that made that transition into paying $5 or even... I, I barely even knew about it. I probably just saw it pop up on my, like, uh, you know, ads, or, um, I mean, uh, Play Store a little bit. I never even bothered with it. $8 a month. Especially if it's a paying service. I don't pay for anything except Nintendo Switch Online. Then if so, what show stood out to you, and would you say that any of them were actually worth paying for? In the end, I respect Quibi for what they attempted. I do think that they were off base with most of it, and did very little that actually worked out, but it was a bold experiment. We ended up with some unique shows from it, not to mention an interesting case study. So any other thoughts you have about Quibi, leave them in the comments. Not bad, not bad, you know? They're still rich. I'd like to hear what you have to say. I'm gonna take this chance to talk more about today's sponsor, Trends. They are the ultimate knowledge hub from the hustle. I recommend them to anybody who's looking to start a business, invest somewhere, or just wants to stay informed and learn about interesting stuff that's happening in business. That's the biggest reason I use it. <laughs> I've never seen an advertisement where he just logs into the website with like autofill. It's interesting. To help make these videos, I'm always trying to stay up to date on what's going on in different markets. I recently came across this article on storage units of all things, and it was so in-depth and so interesting that it stuck with me and I just keep coming back to it. With Trends, you can join all of these communities where you can network and workshop ideas. I recommend listening to some of the podcasts and checking out their newsletter. There's just so much stuff here. I just love learning about things like this, and if that's the case for you, you're going to want to check out Trends. And if you do it right now you can get your first two weeks for just all right we'll check out trends guys one dollar by going to trends.co slash company man
Thank you. All right, guys. Thank, thank you for, for watching. watching. There's too much content for, available for free on YouTube. Yeah, that's what I was thinking. So we said, quiz story is basically going through a side passage to avoid a tough enemy, but it accidentally running to a secret boss instead. Yeah, it could be it would work as YouTube channel that produce original content. I know, right? They, they they just wanted to go against YouTube, and uh, they didn't it didn't work out too much. It's basically a YouTube a paid YouTube, by the way. A paid YouTube. I mean, they couldn't make a, a another version of YouTube as because YouTube's just too big, right, guys? But yeah, guys, that's the video. Thank you guys for watching. Like, comment, subscribe. Press uh. I do all my reactions live on Twitch, so if you want to come through, say hi, you're more welcome, please consider donating. Uh, check out Covenant Man in the description, I'll see you guys next one, later.